We have the power. We have the power to shape our future, a collective future, but a collective future that requires us to rethink sustainability. One of the greatest challenges we face today is finding the balance between our needs, our planet, and our bottom line. This requires us to think sustainability, because sustainability is not just about the tree huggers or the peace lovers. Sustainability requires us to make decisions and choices about our present needs without diminishing the need of future generations to meet their needs. In order for us to operate into the future, we have to think not just about what we need, but what is also needed in the future. Sustainability provides us the power to look into our people, their stories, our natural resources, the raw materials that are necessary for productions of goods and services, the very essential elements that are needed for the mission, and our economy. As a small child, my parents taught me my first lessons of sustainability. Of course, we did not call it sustainability. It was simply preservation. I was born in El Salvador with very little, and at a time during a civil war, a civil war that pulled the country apart, separated families, set back the country's economy, and claimed the lives of thousands of people. Lucky for me, I won the parents' lottery. I won the parents' lottery because no matter what, my parents always made me feel we had enough. First, we had to nurture the family, take care of the family. Every decision and choice we made was centered around the family well-being. My parents prioritized learning and education. Even in the midst of a civil war, we were made to polish our shoes and walk to school. We lived in a small village. We depended on each other. Our neighbors were a social and support system and a network system. We lived in a farm. We depended on the farm. Those were our natural resources. First, it was our basic needs. Anything else extra we had, we traded with our neighbors. It was a small, simple economic system, but it worked. Because of the violence of the Civil War, my father migrated to the United States. Even though our family was separated for more than 10 years, we were always nurtured and connected. At the time, there was no Facebook, there's no text messages, there's none of the social media things that keep us connected today. We didn't even have a phone in our home. However, I recall the excitement of walking and making that phone call and opening and reading letters, the things that keep us connected. I share this with you today because these are the many preservation lessons that are still with us. However, there are times that we lose sight of those things. As leaders, we often find ourselves strategizing on how do we connect our people to the mission, or how do we get more innovative resources to our war fighters, or how do we deal with our programs and projects with the limited financial resources we have. These are some of the things that still affect us and will affect us going forward, but we can find solutions for them. As an adult, I worked in different sectors that have made me see the interconnection of what sustainability truly is. It's simply about people, planet, and profit. It starts with our people. How do we connect our people to the mission? How do we preserve our AFRL family, our customers, our communities, our business partners? It's understanding our human capital. This is simply what Brenda, borrowing from Brenda Brown, this is simply what she refers to as stepping into the arena and having those brave and tough conversations. Conversations that shape our workforce. Conversations about diversity. Conversations about inclusion. And definitely conversations about leadership. One of the second elements when we think of sustainability is looking at our planet, our natural resources, the things that actually move us forward. I have to admit, I actually just skipped a few slides to show you guys. That is my home, that is my family, that is where I grew up. This is where my story began. Lucky for me, I had the opportunity to study in Cambridge 
and I also had the opportunity to work at Air Fire, uh, Royal Air Force Base Lake and Heath. It was here, actually, in Lake and Heath, where I started to really look at the impact of our community and how much we impact not the, only the inside, but the outside of our installations and everything else we do. While in Cambridge, I actually had the opportunity to study, not just study sustainability, but really understand the impact of what it really means and how our government purchasing power can create sustainable impact. I mentioned that it's about people. I mentioned that it's about the connection that we have when we build to the mission. But I also have to mention our planet, the natural resources that actually connect, the actual resources that actually drive us going forward. While we may not think of these things as vital, we really have to think about the fact that everything we do depends on productions of goods and services. We need air, water to train our airmen. We need materials to develop our research and development, those ideas. We also need profit. We also need profit because these are the things that actually help us support our workforce, support our small business development, support our innovation and our research. The U.S. federal government is said to be the largest consumer in the world spending over $450 billion in goods and services every year. But what if we use this government purchasing power to not only create services and programs that benefit our end users, but also our society and our economy? Sustainability is evolving and will continue to evolve. Why does it matter? It matters because businesses and organizations are changing, and so is their workforce. Business as usual is no longer acceptable. Employees need to be treated well, and employees are looking for driven, purpose-sense organizations. It also helps us look into what is desire for our, for our future. Now, I know that sustainability sometimes within what we do is not something that we think about. But you really have to think about the fact that we need our people, and our people need to have purpose. We need materials and supplies to do what we do. And we need an economy that supports us going forward. We also need to not forget our childhood lessons. We also not need to forget the things that connect us. We also not need to forget the things that we must do to push us forward into the future, where a collective future is based not on just our present needs, but also in the ability of future generations to accomplish and have their needs. Thank you.